Hey family, I hope your evening is going great and life is good. Let's catch up on some of this R. Kelly uh, news. So for the last few months, people have speculated that one of the Jane Doe plaintiffs in the R. Kelly case was the young lady at the center of the 2008 child porn trial in which he was tried and he won. And it's now been confirmed. And here's some highlights from the New York Times article. And by the way, the young lady that they're talking about is Rashonda Landfair, who was about 14 at the time that they filmed that video, allegedly. To testify against the singer was crucial to his acquittal in the 2008 trial. But her lawyer says she is now cooperating with prosecutors. The tape, sold as a bootleg on the streets of New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago, was notorious. It showed the R&B singer R. Kelly having sex with and urinating on a girl who prosecutors said was barely a teenager. But although the tape was shown at Mr. Kelly's ensuing child pornography child trial in 2008, the girl and her immediate family refused to testify, a choice that was seen as crucial to the decision to acquit him. In a sign of how dramatically Mr. Kelly's fortunes have changed, a lawyer for that girl, now a woman in her 30s, said on Tuesday that she was cooperating with federal investigators. The extent of her cooperation was not immediately clear, but the statement from her lawyer, Christopher L. Brown, came just days after Mr. Kelly was accused in federal, in a federal indictment of paying the girl and her father to stay quiet, and in some cases, to lie to investigators to protect him. Mr. Kelly is now facing numerous state and federal charges, including sexual assault, obstruction of justice, child pornography, and racketeering. Prosecutors said he had victimized 12 women, at least eight of whom were underaged at the time of the incidents. On Tuesday, Mr. Kelly stood in a federal courtroom in Chicago in an orange jumpsuit and ankle, sh and, and ankle shackles and pleaded not guilty while his lawyer, Steve Greenberg, argued that his client was not a flight risk, noting he had been present for all his previous court dates, but a federal judge ordered him kept in jail without bail, calling the case extraordinarily serious. A federal prosecutor said on Tuesday that if convicted, Mr. Kelly could face a maximum of 195 years in prison and that investigators had identified many more girls beyond the 12 that he may have abused. The defendant is charged with incredibly serious crimes against girls in middle school, uh, Ms. Crow said, as young as 7th and 8th grade. Sheesh, guys. I'm just reading this part now. That's, that's just, ugh. One of the 12 women was the girl at the center of Mr. Kelly's 2008 trial. Her name was, um, I'm just telling you this, the article doesn't say it, but that's Rashonda Lanfair. Um, Mr. Kelly's 2008 trial, but, un but until Tuesday, it was not publicly known whether she would cooperate or whether prosecutors would try to prove she had been a victim by relying on witnesses who knew her as they did in 2008. At least some of the other 12 women are already cooperating. Mr. Kelly was known to record his sexual encounters and during his 2008 trial, expert witnesses for the prosecution said that the tape was a copy, but that it had not been tampered with. 14 witnesses identified the girl in the video who was believed to be around 14 at the time it was made. But the girl and her family did not testify and Mr. Kelly's powerful team of defense uh, lawyers convinced the jury that they could not know for sure who the girl in the tape was. They also argued that it couldn't be proved that the man was Mr. Kelly, despite the presence of a mole on the man's back that the prosecutors said matched the singers. Several jurors said after the trial that the girl's refusal to testify made it difficult to convict him. Mr. Kelly went on to record several more albums, but accusations against him continue to mount in articles by the journalist um, Jim Derogatis in a widely watched documentary on Lifetime Surviving R. Kelly. So uh, it goes on and on. And um, so I'm just going to pick up where parts that are, you know, 
important. According to uh, a federal indictment unsealed last week, Mr. Kelly gave the girl and her family gifts and money both before and after the trial so she would lie to investigators or be unavailable for questioning and so she would not testify against him. Neither the girl nor anyone else in her family was charged. On Tuesday, when asked about the woman's refusal to cooperate before uh, the prosecution, Mr. Kelly said simply, I don't know anything about it. Uh, the girl's aunt who worked with Kelly previously, we know her as Sparkle, uh, one of um, R. Kelly's former protégés, testified in that case in 2008, but it's still they still found him innocent. And she went on to say, this is Sparkle, saying that she's pleased that her family is now coming forward and they're going to have their day in court against him. So based on countless information, the videotape proof, which I've never seen, it looks like it's our, all fingers are going to point to R. Kelly and this time he's probably going to be found guilty um, because she's cooperating and if she was the victim and you know it's gonna be hard before she didn't testify but if she testifies now I think this is going to um you know they're gonna find him guilty so even though this occurred and you know I, I'm I'm putting out questions and I would love for you guys to comment you know make comments um if her family did indeed accept money doesn't that make her parents guilty as well not the young lady because she was a minor at that time and she was in the care and custody of her parents so of course she really didn't have a voice you know she was a kid she didn't know but as a parent isn't it your duty to protect your child I mean I know he probably paid them well but most parents that's the one thing that we try to protect our child our children from is any kind of sexual abuse or any harm you know be it physical mental that's one of the things that you know we work really hard to ensure that our kids are protected so this is you know um like what role did her parents play what do you guys think leave your comments let me know um could they be charged as co-conspirators you know if they accepted the money are they co-conspirators and enablers um, and I'm just asking the questions. I'm not saying that he's absolved or Kelly is absolved from what he did, but it seems like her family may, if they covered it up, then they're just as guilty for accepting the money and essentially allowing the sex trafficking, you know, because honestly, until this, until they go to trial this time and they testify, you know, were her, did her parents know all along what was happening i mean there have been reports previously people witnesses have said that they actually saw that young girl going to the studio to r kelly's studio as a teenager with a, a pillow to spend the night like your parents aren't there you're going to spend the night with a grown man in a recording studio and i know that she was a, a singer at the time but you know i even when your children are you know playing sports and all kinds of activities you just never entrust your child with a, a male adult or anybody you know it just i don't know it that is not something that i i did so and i'm not trying to condemn anybody but it just seems curious so um you know did they let this young girl go and just take the money under the table and and turn the blind guy to it and if they did doesn't that make them just as guilty i'm just saying you were supposed to protect your child how could you accept money um and take trips knowing that this had happened to your child and not only sexually was she sexually violated but just the 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 idea that you accept the money from somebody that peed in your daughter's mouth that's just i mean that's a whole nother level right there it just you know anyway so i guess all of this will come out in the wash you know we'll hear more about it but people like let me know your thoughts what do you think are the parents just as guilty so just a quick update um another turn of events for r kelly's two girlfriends asriel 
Cleary and Justin Savage. Now it looks like they may be in a bit of hot water because after the feds swooped in and arrested R. Kelly, they weren't very cooperative um, at the apartment or condo rather, excuse me, Mr. Kelly, it's a condo, darling. Um, they weren't very cooperative and so it sounds like uh, the feds are saying that they may have tried to uh, obstruct justice as well and they are believing that these girls would do anything to protect him and anything to cover up his misdeeds so they may be facing some the, 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 it looks like they're going from victim to defendants possibly which we hope that's not the case i hope these girls wake up reunite with your parents before you get yourself into some deeper shit that you can't handle you know um also if you saw pictures of them at the courtroom they were wearing some well asriel i should say because we know that they got blue jobs at his request and he paid for it um they were wearing some pretty revealing clothes and i know we've heard that r kelly likes the girls to stay covered he doesn't like other men looking at them but it looks like they've been out there living a best living a best life having a hot girl summer because they've been on social media which we know he didn't allow that because they've been mute on social media for the last four years so these girls are out there just having a party at the trump towers but you know what on the other hand are you know when they did that um that little interview that tmz has been showing where they're saying no we're doing good and everything how do we know somebody wasn't standing over in a corner with a gun saying you better say this how do we know that they're not being coerced and not being forced to say these things i mean right because you know those lifetime movies where people get in the um camera and they're like yes no i'm fine everything's great it's marvelous i'm having the time of my life and there's a person over in the corner with a gun in their back saying yeah i, I wish you would say something okay so i mean it could be that too who knows we don't know but um and also we're it's being said that they don't have access to money they do have the condo but the person who would typically give them their stipend has gone missing and so they don't have access to their money and they also have an attorney um schmidt i believe glorious i forget her name anyway they have an attorney that's representing them she's also the attorney that's representing um the two brothers in the jesse smullett case so we know what kind of attorney she is okay so yeah it, it's just a lot going on but we're gonna stay on top of this story and get back to you on the next one Bye. Oh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. All right. Bye. Hey, YouTube family. On this channel, we know children are the future, and we support organizations that help children and their families excel to a better future. One organization that is dedicated to empowering and improving the lives of youth and families is Operation Community Care. Their mission is to focus on and provide services to communities that are underserved and represented. What does that mean? If you're in the Southwest Dallas, Texas area and need assistance, Operation Community Care provides the following services. After school summer programs, summer food programs to feed children. They offer community resources and a plethora of services and referrals that can help serve you. So if you need help, or just want to get involved in supporting your community, give Operation Community Care a call today and see how they can help you. And for those of you that are not in the Dallas area, but know the struggles of parenthood and want to help out with a donation, log on to their website, check them out, and you can get all the information for donating. And whatever you donate, you can claim as a tax exemption. That's a win-win. So be a part of the solution and contact Operation Community Care today. Contact information linked in the description. Thank you.